Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News analyst Emmanuel Efeni, the great Malabite. Good morning, Emmanuel. Good, Good morning. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning, Good morning. Yes, we started the review with these day Nigeria's newspaper of record. We start with the story above the masthead. Health care delivery is people's right and not privilege, says First Lady Remy Tinubu wants removal of all barriers to actualize health for all. World Health Organization, 4.5 billion people lack full essential health. Well, the First Lady making that commitment there, but I think it's within the powers of the President to declare health for all. It's part of what we expect any government to do, to increase, uh, perhaps first, the health budget to meet the OAU agreed threshold and make health care uh, available to most Nigerians, if not all. It should be all Nigerians deserve to have health care, but we know what obtains. Government hospitals, yes, many government hospitals have the personnel the consultants in many fields, but when people go there, what do they get? They are still giving prescriptions to go and buy their drugs elsewhere. Not many people have health insurance. Perhaps that's where the Mrs. Tinubu should be looking at, and um, perhaps because she's been very outspoken very recently, I think she can weigh in on that rather than just pronouncing that health care delivery is people's right. She's in a government that is in a position to actualize this right. So let's see concrete action from the government of the day. But there's a whole team of the president in charge of health care. And uh, perhaps before long, they have something in the works. Yeah, so perhaps the minister should come here and tell Nigerians what is in stock since the president's wife. The First Lady, Senator Hulura uh, Mitinubu, is declaring that it's the people's right, the right to health care delivery. Now, the other story below the masthead, Atiku raises concern over Lagos Calabar Highway project, suggests it should have started from Calabar if genuine. Well, this is one project that has been uh, on the drawing board for quite some time the highway from Calabar to Lagos will cut across nine states. It will actually open up that uh, corridor to development and, of course, economic activities, if completed. Well, of course, it all started um, with the Jonathan administration, but before that could be actualized, of course, the Jonathan government Good luck, Ibele Jonathan lost that presidential election. But President Muhammad Buhari announced in 2016 the takeoff of this project and renegotiated the cost by $800 million to $11.1 billion. And uh, suppose it's supposed to be ready in three years, but at least we know that not much happened on that road. Now, the Tinubu administration has come forward to say, look, this project has to take off for the benefit it will give to uh, the people of nine states, especially the coastal states. But the presidential candidate of the PDP, Atiku Abubakar, has raised some concerns. Well, one of the concerns that it should have started from Calabar, perhaps, that end will need this project most. But even if it starts in Lagos, well, the president is from Lagos State. It's not unusual in this climb for leaders to give priority to where they come from. We saw it in the Buhari era, where almost every project you can think of had to be cited in Daura, the present hometown. So if President Bola Metinubu is starting this project from Lagos, which is one end of the Lagos-Calabar highway project. Well, I don't think I will 
uh, take too much quarter. As long as the project is funded and completed, but Atiku Abubakar has also raised other issues. Issues of transparency, what is the project going to cost, and of course the caliber of the contractor, uh, who has also demonstrated some lack of capacity in some other projects it handled in the past. And I think this is some questions the, pre the presidency should give answers to. It's not a matter of presidential spokesperson to throwing uh, tantrums. I think they should learn from what uh, people do elsewhere. Atiku Abubakar has raised concerns, issues, and I expect presidential spokesperson, in, instead of just uh, jumping and uh, throwing tantrums, get facts and issue a proper response to the Turaki Adamawa uh, article Abubakar. Now, the lead story, KPMG, monetary tightening policy will attract more forex inflows, but not enough to tame inflation. FDC, Nigeria's surging prices to peak, begin moderate decline from second half of 2024. So yes, VAT should be raised to 10% to fund minimum wage hike, says Naira undervalued by 26.76%. Well, KPMG, uh, the Global Audit Tax and Advisory Services Company, uh, weighing in on measures taken so far by the central bank and how it will affect the economy. Well, it will attract more inflows of FX and we'll see the Naira ah, regaining some strength, although many Nigerians will still not smile about the value of the Naira at 1,225 Naira or thereabout. The Business Day newspaper also reporting on the monetary policy. Cardoso needs help as monetary policy nears wit's end. Of course, the business day reporting there that Yemi Kadoso with his policies has ticked a number of the right boxes and um, with the Naira uh, firming up at 1,225 uh, Naira to the dollar. Yes, some gains there. But the paper is saying that um, this was made possible after scarce dollar from foreign portfolio investors poured in on the back of the CBN reform. So CBN reforms there attracting uh, some portfolio investors and we're seeing more FS coming into the system. Now the Guardian newspaper also talking about the finance sector rode to 500 billion Naira recapitalization. Bank owners lobby seek adjustment in share capital composition. And um, the infographics in the front page of the Guardian newspaper, Nigeria may witness low, fewer banks by March 31, 2026, when all banks must comply with the recapitalization threshold. Uh, of course, that is expected because we're likely to see some mergers. And in that case, uh, definitely, the number of banks will come down, as we saw in the Soludo era during that recapitalization. Now, monetary tightening may continue to check inflation as prices remain sticky. Tier 1 banks need to source for 1.5 trillion naira to bridge the capital shortfall. The banking industry sits on 3.85 trillion in retained earnings. The Guardian newspaper reporting there. Now, the Punch newspaper, federal government plans three national ID cards for 104 million Nigerians in June. NIMC, always presidential approval for May launch, says procurement will be seamless. Nigeria to get different e-cards for banking, social intervention, ECOWAS activities. Well, three national ID cards, I don't know how that will look. Why not one that can do all, uh, you can use for all transactions? Will that not be an unnecessary 
waste of funds for Nigerians to have three national ID cards? Well, the promise is that obtaining these cards will be seamless because for now Nigerians are still carrying pieces of paper as their NIN identification. So the earlier Nigerians get proper ID card, but three, as this story is saying, well, that may be just too many for one person. Now, the Vanguard newspaper, petrol. Oil marketers proposed 550 naira per litre price to Dangote. Talks ongoing over price margins, others, marketers. Let's enjoy benefit of domestic refining. Experts, consumers are urging. Sector-wide impact expected. CPPE, refinery owners, taxpayer government on $1 billion fund. While the Daily Trust newspaper reporting, Nigerians in UAE stranded over work permit visa ban. Lose over 200 jobs, face discrimination. They should return home to build Nigeria. Discussion ongoing to resolve issues, minister's aid. Below the photograph, palliative, nine die in stampede in Wamako's house. This happened in Sokoto State, Ali Wamako, uh, big wig, uh, top politician uh, of the APC Hill, were distributing palliative for the salar. And nine people died in the stampede. A shame. Poverty, palliative, and death. Story of Nigeria these days. Not acceptable. Abuja inquirer. Abuja tops banned. A users. Asokuro Gaki lead. FCCPC bats neck. 200 million naira fine of Abuja Electric Distribution Company. That's the Abuja inquirer. Now, the foreign newspapers quickly, if we just look at uh, the Financial Times. Biden poised to warn Beijing against aggressive tactics in South China Sea. That's the Financial Times. Fears over Philippines' base president to underline U.S. defense pact. Bid to get Japan into Arcus. Now, the Wall Street Journal. The lead story there. Six months after Hamas attack, Israel's world is upside down. Yet, Israel seems to be spoiling for more in that attack of Iranian embassy in Syria because there's likely to be retaliation. Retaliation will follow retaliation. And of course, there will just be expansion of the war in the Middle East. Of course, another story on the front page of the Wall Street Journal is economic data stirred doubts about Fed rate cuts. Latest strong job number first on fewer reductions this year or even more. Ruben and Ayo. Okay, uh, three quick things. Earlier on, I was commenting on Philip Shaibo, uh, the deputy governor of Edo State. Who has been impeached. impeached. Yeah. And I said he had it coming anyway. And the enabling section of the Constitution is Section 188. On the surface of it, the House of Assembly Edo State will seem to have followed that process. But Philip Shaibu refused to defend himself. His, his lawyers were the counsel. Yeah. His counsel also refused to show up because you have the. They went there and they were asked, citing a court injunction. Yes, a, a high court, a, a federal high court injunction. Yeah. And, and the panel. So maybe we have not had the end of the story yet. But what I was referring to earlier on is that under section, that section 188, we deal with removal of governor or deputy governor. Sub 10 says the court cannot inquire into it. Sub 11 says gross misconduct is as defined by uh, the House of Assembly. And in this case, they are accusing Shaibu of perjury. They are accusing him of leaking uh, government secrets. Maybe he and his counsel will still go back to, uh, will go to court and say uh, the legislature acted in contempt. But I don't see how far it will go. It's not always that they succeed in court, after all. Well, Ladoja succeeded in uh, in Akuju versus Adelik, After he had been removed. Uh, popularly known as the Rashidi <laughs> Ladoja case. Yes. So let's see what happens. But 
you know. Well, the will of um, impeachment, once it starts, it takes its normal course, and Philip Shaibu is out. Yeah, okay. We saw no. it coming. How uh, two pars of Baseki and Shaibu, who were like good bedfellows, you will say, to the extent that God, you know, Baseki told PDP, I must run with my deputy. And okay. now things are falling I'm apart. Falling apart. I know. And Philip Shaibu, Shaibu is no longer Emmanuel the deputy Emmanuel. governor. Maybe and, somebody and will the take first lady is right to say how it is. Uh, everybody is yes. right. Well, they should actualize it. Se Section 17 of the United yes, States Constitution says that all of us will have the right to be well taken care of. Very, very true. Very well said. Okay, thank you very much, Emmanuel. Okay.